for the animal, mycotoxins are bad news. Um, they can cause lots of different impacts. They can cause a drop in uh, reproduction. Um, that's well known one of our zon mycotoxins uh, because it mimics the estrogen fat hormone within the animals and therefore causes abortions. And uh, our other favorite mycotoxin that a lot of farmers have issues with is DON, uh, also known as vomitoxin in the US. And that causes many different symptoms, such as loss of milk production. Um, obviously, as the other nickname suggests, it causes vomiting in animal feed review, refusals. Um, but one of the things they also do is cause damage to the gut health and intestinal lining, which is very important to the cow. <laughs> So hello everyone, uh, this is Luis Ferreiro, one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Uh, and today we have the opportunity to discuss with Sue Lee. Thank you for allowing me to come onto this podcast. Research manager uh, of feed additives with Volac International. Uh, first, thank you, Sue Lee, for joining us. And could you please give us a, a brief background about yourself? I initially didn't start in the field of animal science or animal nutrition. Um, so I'm a microbiologist by training. Um, in fact, my love once was fungal pathogens in humans. Um, I spent 11 years in that subject before moving over to the animal industry. Um, and then ever since then, I have been working on looking at feed additives and how they help promote um, animal productivity and health. Yeah, thanks for this brief background. No, absolutely. Microbiologists, they are super important to us uh, nutritionists because someone has to understand about all the different microbes that affect the dairy cow, right? Said that, right? I know that sometimes it's not the microbes per se, it's maybe some of the compounds that they produce. So tell us more about what are mycotoxins and endotoxins and how can they impact ruminant animals? So Mycotoxins are basically secondary metabolites produced by fungal pathogens that you'll find in the field. And um, they're just growing casually. So from the fungal pathogens point of view, mycotoxins are great because they're the defense mechanism against the evil bacteria and other microorganisms in the environment that is trying to steal its nutritional sources. Um, but for the animal, mycotoxins are bad news. Um, they can cause lots of different impacts. They can cause a drop in uh, reproduction. Um, that's well known one of our zon mycotoxins uh, because it mimics the estrogen fat hormone within the animals and therefore causes abortions. And uh, our other favorite mycotoxin that a lot of farmers have issues with is don, uh, also known as vomitoxin in the US. And that causes many different symptoms such as loss of milk production. Um, obviously, as the other nickname suggests, it causes vomiting in animal feed review refusals. Um, but one of the things they also do is cause damage to the gut health and intestinal lining, which is very important to the cow. No, absolutely. And actually, vomitoxin has been an issue in recent years. You know, uh, we actually saw some increases in the numbers of those in feed samples. And obviously, it's something that more and more we have to be very careful about. Uh, but you mentioned a little bit of the impact on gut health. Tell us more about that. Why gut health is so important to the ruminant animals? And how does mycotoxin change that? So the gut health is becoming... I guess you could almost say the sense of universe for everything, or we say we view it as very important. And lots of research lately has started really focusing on the gut health, and it's a lot more complex than we initially thought. Uh, so approximately 70% of your immune system is within your gut, and, and that's where it's working fully. Um, you can almost say your gut is split into kind of four um, sets parameters to protect us because obviously with animals ingesting food and nutrients they're also ingesting bacteria and toxins that are also in the environment so actually the gut is very important for the animal to protect itself from invasion of these toxins and pathogens um, so the gut kind of works in four four barriers we could almost split it up to there's a there's the actual physical barrier which is the epithelial cell lining um, which protects it from toxins entering and um, pathogens entering barrier um, and therefore 
going into the system of the host. There is also an almost, we could say, chemical um, barrier because we obviously have our own cytokines and inflammatory response, um, immune system responses that will activate upon seeing a pathogen that will be released from the epithelial cell lines from the gut that will help reduce the pathogen load and also remove nasty toxins. Um, but we also have a mucosal barrier um, and this layer is also very important um, because again, it kind of traps some of our pathogenic um, bacteria within that layer, but it also helps beneficial bacteria grow. So the muc mucosal layer, we also kind of denote it as a microbio my microbiome barrier. And one of the things we are finding about the gut health is that actually the microbiome plays a huge important part in the health of a healthy immune system and the gut and the interactions are very, very complex, but essentially you both have beneficial microbes living within your gut and you also have your pathogenic bacteria living in, within the gut. The more beneficial bacteria you have, the less likely you are to have, you know, pathogenic bacteria because they outcompete the pathogenic bacteria. I um, mean, growth, beneficial bacteria also do really helpful things for the cow. Um, for example, they will help digest um, dietary fibers that the cow might not be able to digest. So therefore allowing more energy um, to the cow, but they will also help um, digest certain carbohydrates that they will then produce um, volatile fatty acid compounds um, and also butyric acid, which are helpful to the host. So butyric acid can then be used by the host for further energy direction, but it also acts as an antimicrobial um, in the gut, so therefore helps suppress bacteria as well in that sense. So in that sense, the microbiome population being in homeostasis is very important. And what happens when you get things like endotoxins um, is they will actually interfere with this microbiome community. And, and what you'll start seeing is some of your beneficial microbes will start to be killed by the mycotoxins. Um, and that's also bad news for the host itself because actually part of the microbiome community within the gut is also actually really good at detoxifying these mycotoxins. Um, so that changes the dietary composition or, well, not dietary composition, sorry, dietary microbiome of your gut. Um, so the bacteria microbiome changes. Um, and that will therefore lead to different effects in the animals. Um, so you, one of the um, mycotoxins, for example, um, DON, reduces the amount of firmicutes within the gut microflora. And firmicutes are a big group of bacteria that actually are your best carbohydrate enzyme producers, which therefore break down complex carbon sugars um, and help you break down those dietary fibers that you don't have the enzyme to fight, break down to, essentially. So clearly mycotoxins and endotoxins could cause a lot of harm to the gut health of the animals. So said that, how can we make sure that first we prevent uh, the animals to get some of those mycotoxins, endotoxins, either in the diet or the environment, but also, what are the other things that we can do to actually protect the gut from issues like those? Um, there are a number of different things you could do to reduce mycotoxins. Um, obviously, there are things you could do. There are certain things where you could do at harvesting to manage the mycotoxins. Um, so obviously, when you're tilling your, um, doing your harvest or tilling the land, you would try and bury the crops, dead red crop residues back into the ground so that you prevent the mycotoxins um, in your next um, harvest seasons. Um, you can also use mycotoxin remediators that are on the market to kind of bind um, and transform some of the mycotoxins that are present in the feed to reduce, you know, intake of the animal and the mycotoxins affecting the animal. Um, but there are other, other things you could also do, such as improving the gut health um because obviously one of the things i might not have mentioned during my amble earlier is that mycotoxins also damage the epithelial cell lining of the gut and therefore that makes it more leaky and more permeable which therefore means that 
your mycotoxins and also your endotoxins. Um, and endotoxins will cause a pro-inflammatory response in the animal, uh, which therefore means the animal is overreacting, or even in humans, not just animals, endotoxins, um, but therefore the animal or host will be overreacting from the immune stimulus. And that also has a kind of vicious feedback circle where it also damages the cell, your own cell further, causes further damage, um, and therefore causes further the intestine to be further broken down. And then you're diverting energy, which you could be using for, say, milk production or body weight into repairing your cells. Um, but at the same time, because you've damaged the epithelial cell lining, you're now allowing an increased risk of pathogens and other toxins to cross the, the gut blood barrier and actually enter the host system and then spread around the body to create even more um, problems further down the line. Um, so one of the other ways you could help um, is obviously by using a combination of prebiotics or probiotics that actually help repair your intestinal gut health. Um, there are also prebiotics available on the market that will help modulate the immune system. And therefore, it does mean that if the immune system does see an increase in LPS, it will be much better for it to cope with because it won't um, create such a strong inflammatory, pro-inflammatory response that will lead to damaging your own kind of cells. Thank you. Yeah, so it looks like it's a tag-team approach, right? Multiple things that we have to do and make sure that uh, we don't expose the animals to all those issues. Introducing Ultrasorb R3.0, Volax comprehensive and complete solution to reduce the negative impact of naturally occurring toxins on ruminants. Ultrasorb R3.0 is a species-specific product designed to mitigate the effects of specific mycotoxins in the gastrointestinal tract of ruminants. Ultrasorb R3.0 also offers lipopolysaccharides binding capabilities. Endotoxins such as LPS can contribute to inflammation in ruminants with energy partitioned to mount an immune response instead of production. Learn more about Ultrasorb R3.0 at volac.com. So... Let's suppose that farmers have issues with mycotoxins and endotoxins. What are some of the early signs or symptoms that we can try to uh, pay attention or close attention to to make sure that these do not develop into something uh, more problematic to a herd? It's actually, I would say, it's actually quite difficult to sometimes tell if you have an endotoxin or a mycotoxin issue because obviously endotoxins form part of the gram-negative uh, bacteria cell wall. Um, and obviously, we all know bacteria exists everywhere. Um, and because it's a natural part of the cell wall, uh, well, cell membrane of this bacteria, um, all gram-negative bacteria contain endotoxins. And it's only when the bacteria dies that it's released um, and therefore may cause an issue. And in general, um, we will all be seeing endotoxins all the time because bacteria is everywhere. So we'll be ingesting, breathing it in all the time. And so as long as the animal is healthy um, in terms of the endotoxins, um, the host's own immune system is well able to deal with the effect of the endotoxins. Um, it's only when there are stresses in place or the animal is immune suppressed or in some way unhealthy that the endotoxins, that kind of hemostasis balance shifts. And there's also kind of your really high fiber dark grain diet uh, because there is a risk of potentially having, you know, feeding these animals high grain fiber diets. There's always a risk of acidosis um, and having acidosis obviously causes a huge endotoxin problem because acidosis leads to a drop in the rumen pH. Um, this drop in rumen pH actually causes bacteria within the rumen pH to actually lyse. And obviously, as I said, all gram-negative bacteria contain LPS, which is what we call the endotoxin, as part of their cell membrane. So if they all start, all the gram-negatives start dying, um, their cells will naturally lyse and the endotoxins will be released more into the system. Um, so again, that could be a situation where endotoxins could cause um, an issue. Um, some of the kind of symptoms you might typically see uh, with an endotoxin issue, as I said, it's quite difficult to tell because 
most of these symptoms are quite similar to many other things. Um, so you'd expect to maybe see high fever in the animals um, because of an increased in, um, inflammatory response from the immune system. Um, in, some, um, in some animals, you might see feed refusal. Um, you could see a loss of productivity as in they're feeding the same, you know, they're eating the same amount, but you're not seeing this translated in kind of milk milk yields or body weight gain, you're not quite sure where it's going, well, it's more likely to be going towards, you know, defending the animal and going diverted towards the immune response system. So I always say the best approach to see if you've got a mycotoxin issue is maybe to send your feed uh, for analysis. Thank you, Sully. Uh, it was great discussing these topics with you. It's a topic that, you know, more and more we have to pay very close attention to. Uh, this mycotoxins and endotoxins and obviously gut health right so thanks again thank you at home for joining our podcast today and we hope to see you soon thank you. <laughs> hey everyone we are always searching for the latest and greatest research to share weekly if you have a dairy nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us feel free to email the details of your research to hello at wisenetics.com Thank you and hope to see you soon.